Oscar, thank you so much for joining us. Thank uh, you. You know, one of the one of the biggest rising stars in the sport, Virgil Ortiz Jr. You've de- promoted him, developed him. He fights in his biggest fight yet, Maurice Hooker, this Saturday on the zone. Why do you think he's ready right now for a guy like this? You know, I mean, the, the fact that he's uh, he's been stepping up in competition uh, the right way. He's been fighting and knocking out those guys that supposedly should be giving him a, a, a tough test. And he's been passing that test with flying colors. Um, I, I just thought that it was the, the right time to do it, especially with having guys like... Uh, like the Terrence Crawford's uh, having guys like Errol Spence and Danny Garcia and, uh, and all those guys at 147. I mean, the time is now and, and uh, him fighting Saturday night against Hooker. And if he looks great, if he passes that test um, the way I think he should, um, and it's not going to be easy. I, I just feel that he's ready for anybody. Yeah. And Lance, Lance had a really interesting story in the athletic this week, polling boxing insiders about, Virgil Ortiz's readiness for such a fight with Terrence Crawford. And I look back and I just think that in boxing, we have too much babying going on now. And I know that's not the way you were brought up and it's not the way some fighters are brought up. But a lot of times these days you hear promoters, they want to do 25 easy fights, 20 easy fights. Why is that the wrong approach, Oscar? Well, look, it doesn't, it doesn't do the, first of all, look, it doesn't do the fan any justice. It doesn't do the fighter any justice. And it doesn't do, it doesn't do uh the promoter any justice. I mean, when you, and that's the right term, actually, when you baby a fighter, um, you're not developing him the correct way. Uh, you're not making any fans, uh, the, the way the fighter deserves, uh, uh to have fans. Um, and you're not doing the sport any justice. I, I, th- I think that there's, there's a, everything is calculated and everything has to be precise, you know, and, and, and that's exactly why, you know, yes, we don't baby our fighters, but we're not going to throw them in with lions right away, but we're going to put them in fights where they have to, where they have to walk through fire. You know, I mean, when you walk through fire, yeah, you're going to get burned here and there, but if you can pass that test, then you move on and you're, you elevate your game. What are you, so saying that, what are you looking for him to accomplish in this fight against Maurice Hooker on Saturday, Oscar? You, you know, Lance, I, I think I think that I think that the fact that Maurice is going to give him angles, he's going to give him speed, uh, the experience that Maurice has. I mean, he's been in there with uh, with Ramirez, for instance, which was a great yeah, fight. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to give him, you know, that experience, the confidence. Um, if he can beat a fighter like Hooker on Saturday night. Imagine what it does to his confidence level. Um, you know, it, it, it elevates him to another level. It elevates him to that championship level where he deserves to be. The thing that shined in the story that I did on Virgil and, the, you know, talking about his readiness for Terrence Crawford is time and again, it came back to the point of the reason we believe in this guy is because he's in the gym all the time and he's so dedicated. Is that the thing that you see that shines about Virgil Ortiz more than anything, even beyond what you've seen from him in the ring? You, you know, you know what I see is 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 is, is a combination of, uh, of 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 different things. For instance, uh, he's he's yeah, he's very dedicated. You're right. Uh, he loves working out. He loves running. He loves uh, yeah. He loves being in the gym. He's 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 a gym rat. What we call mm-hmm. it boxing. And uh, but he's also he stays humble. You know, he stays hungry. And I think that's one of the most important attributes that a fighter can have is to stay hungry and humble. You know, because he, you never hear Virgil Ortiz talk about, well, I should be making this and that and that. You know what? When, you, when you're in these types of fights, when you're in the championship level type of, 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 of boxing and you take care of business, the, the money will come. The money, you know, I always tell the fighter, take care of business in the ring. Do what you have to do. Yes, we're going to pay you what you deserve, obviously, and we pay you very well. But the money will come once you get to that championship level. Everything will fall into place. All you have to do is focus on your boxing. Yeah, speaking of that, Oscar, you have a guy in Ryan Garcia who's developing pretty rapidly. He had a great performance against Luke Campbell in January. What's the latest with him? Um, we are, we are, uh, we've talked to his manager uh, recently, and, uh, and uh, we presented a, a deal for him 
a fight package deal for him that uh, that he really loved. Um, you know, my plans for him is to uh, is to you know possibly have a world tour with him. You know, Ryan Garcia is in a very unique position. For instance, okay, he's in a very very unique position. If you take a look at Ryan Garcia's uh, Instagram uh, followers, okay. Uh, you know, and he's not even world champion. He's a very popular fighter all over the world. So we have to make sure that we present to him very unique ideas. And so in the weeks to come, in the days to come, we're going to sit down with Ryan and explain to him the plan that we have. And, uh, you know, and I think he's going to be very excited about it. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, very uh, pleased with what we came up uh, for Ryan. Uh, it's going to be very unique. I don't think uh, any other fighter has done this uh, uh, since Muhammad Ali, for instance. So uh, we we feel we feel that uh, that Ryan is in a position where you know he's a global superstar. And I think that's really important for the growth of the sport. I think a lot of us Americans forget that there's a whole big world out there, and we get stuck in this kind of incestuous mindset with the Americans, but right. boxing is a global sport and it's a lot bigger right. in the UK, for example, than it is right. in the U S how yeah. important do you think it is for the health of boxing that we continue to branch out? Yeah, no, it's very important. I mean, look, uh, Dubai has opened up for us for the sport of boxing. Uh, the UK is huge. Like you said, uh, Mexico has always been big. Uh, you know, the U S uh, if you have the right fighters, the right fights, uh, we fill up arenas. Um, so look, boxing, boxing is a sport that is a global sport. And, uh, as long as you have the right fighters and the right fights, um, and like you said, look, I mean, the, the social media world has brought the world together and, uh, you know, it's a matter, it's a matter of time, uh, that, uh, that we see these big, huge mega fights, uh, take place, uh, in the years to come. Great. So that would include, I mean, look, Oscar, I mean, what you just got done saying about Virgil, I think is somewhat in play with Ryan as well. I mean, these these fights against the guys like Devin Haney, uh, Gervonta Davis, yeah. Tiafimo Lopez are at hand. How important is it for you as the promoter to make sure that Ryan is involved in those in those bouts? And what what is the time frame that you have in mind on those? Yeah, look, I, I was I was with Tiafimo the other day. Uh, he was a. Uh, he was filming a commercial for uh, for his next fight uh, on Triller, and 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 let me say one thing about about Triller is that let me tell you they know they know how to do it. This this commercial is gonna be like a like a like a movie. It's it's incredible. Yeah. Um, but I was talking to to Teofimo, and uh, you know I, I've never I've never met such a nice kid uh, outside the ring, and obviously we know he's a beast inside the ring. But look, the bottom line is, and the truth is, is that. Everybody needs Ryan Garcia. And, and, and that's the world we're living in. Everybody needs Ryan Garcia. So I, I was talking to Teofimo and he can't wait to fight Ryan Garcia. He wants to fight Ryan Garcia. But it, it, it's a matter of fact it, is that we feel that Ryan Garcia is in a position right now, okay, that he can call the shots and not even be world champion. That, that's the unique part about this. So, look, I, they just have to let me do my job. And, uh, and we can make all these fights happen. You know, Oscar, I can remember the most determined that I can ever re uh, recall you as a promoter was at the time when you were splitting from Richard Schaefer, where basically you were taking your business back and you said, like, you know, this is mine. I'm taking full control. And I, I see a little of that going on now. I mean, I know, okay. you know, you've gotten through the split with Canelo. Are you sort okay. of feeling the same way or even more emboldened about this is my baby and th these are the big plans that I want to yeah. execute? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I mean, it's it's not easy being a promoter. I mean, as as you know, Lance, uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's been a, it's been a roller coaster uh, for many years, uh, but we're still here. You know, I mean, uh, at this time now, we promote. Ryan Garcia, we promote uh, Jaime Munguia, we promote uh, Virgil Ortiz, uh, you know, we promote uh, fighters like uh, like uh, Jojo Diaz, we promote fighters, you know, Seniesa, who's fighting for the world title. So, look, we're, we're very proud of, of, of what I've been able to accomplish through the trials and tribulations. I mean, you know, I mean, I've had people try to take over my company uh, in a hostile way. I mean, and we've survived it, you know, so I've had, I've had Fortune 500 companies trying to bury me uh, alive, and we've survived it. So um, it's 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 a matter of uh, of of making the right moves. It's a matter of uh, you know I love what I do. 
I really do. I, as stressful as it can be, um, you know, as much as I have to keep dyeing my hair, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not an easy job, but it's a job that I love doing. Yeah. And uh, Oscar, speaking of Jojo Diaz, I, we ran a story last week about, you know, this, all these things he's been going through with his managers, uh, Ralph and Moses Heredia. It's obviously an ugly situation, had his car taken away. What were your thoughts on all that? Uh, um, look, I mean, he has, he has his issues with his manager and, uh, you know, we try to stay away from it. We look, uh, Jojo's happy with, with, with what we've, you know, accomplished for him, what we're doing for him. Uh, you know, the, the managerial uh, issues are, are, you know, issues that are unfortunate, but uh, it happens in boxing. You know, hopefully he can get through them and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and take care of those issues. Um, but uh, we have big plans for Jojo. We, I think Jojo is one of the best fighters out there in the world. And, uh, you know, he deserves a rematch with Farmer. He deserves the big major fights. I think Jojo can go in there with anybody and give, give them help. Yeah, and he's a great action fighter. He has a ton of charisma. Yeah. And I think... You know, it's too bad he lost the title at the scales, but I think he has a bright future. But a guy who has a bright future maybe as well, Oscar De La Hoya. Uh, you've talked a lot about <laughs> <laughs> you talked a lot about fighting again, and we see you're in great shape. And you said that you were with Triller the other day. Triller's in the entertainment business. Oscar De La Hoya also in the entertainment business. We know you always brought all the celebrities out to your fights. I remember that Sugar Shane Mosley fight at Staples Center. Are you going right. to be fighting on Triller? Is that a possibility? Uh, no. No, no, it's, uh, you know, I was, I was out there to, uh, to go just to go check things out and say hi to my good friend, uh, Ryan, uh, Kavanaugh. Uh, but again, he's doing amazing, amazing things for boxing. I think he's changing the sport. I think, I mean, not really changing the sport because boxing will always be boxing, but we have to, we have to, we have to take into consideration that, I mean, look with, with all this social media and the YouTubers and this and that, why not open up a division that is just solely entertainment, you know? Fighters want to, I mean, these YouTubers and, and athletes, and they want to be involved in fighting. It's like, it's like, for instance, I want to be, I wanted to be a singer one day. I wanted to be a, I wanted to be a football player one day. I want, you know, but the beautiful thing about this is that other athletes can become fighters if they want, if they want to, not in the real boxing world, but if we can open up a different division, that's entertainment. I think it sells. Yeah. And I know that maybe some people don't take it seriously, your comeback, but I think you are serious. I am taking it seriously. What's the latest? When can we expect to see you in the ring and maybe against what kind of fighter? Well, look, I mean, I've, I've, I've been training for the last two months. I mean, it's no secret. And I feel, I feel amazing. I mean, I, I sparred the other day and I swear to you, I didn't know, I didn't know how good I was. <laughs> I, I had forgotten how good I was. I, I seriously forgot how good I was. And, you know, I mean, it's it's just look the legends of the past if you compare them to the fighters of today it was a whole different it was a whole different beast it was a whole different animal a whole different game and so i mean imagine if i go up against uh you know a big name fighter from the ufc or something or a big name fighter whoever i don't i don't care who it is i mean i always fought the very best but uh i wouldn't i wouldn't mind doing it again i just have to make sure that my health is okay Maybe not a fighter, but UFC is Dana White. Dana White versus Oscar De La Hoya. Oh my gosh! Could you imagine the? <laughs> could you imagine the pay per view buys? I, th I think he would have to lose like a few pounds. I mean, this guy looks kind of big. <laughs> <laughs> who is who is the one fighter, Oscar? And your you know whether it's on your resume or someone that got away from you during your career that you wish you could fight if you could get this person in the ring to kind of finish you know these uh, the the unfinished business. Who would it be? I think I think the only fighter out there that uh, that you know obviously that I would think about is is Floyd Mayweather. I yes. mean, you know, the fact that we had a rematch clause uh, in, in our contract, um, you know, for a year, and then he retires for a year and one day. I mean, what kind of cop out is that, right? Um, that's probably unfinished business right there. Could that happen? I they, anything can happen now with all the money being thrown around. Yeah, you know, you know, money Mayweather. He's 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 all about the money. One of the things that I thought was pretty cool is I know not too long ago you had a lunch with Bob Arum, your former promoter. And the thing yeah. is, Oscar, I mean, um, if anyone among all the promoters has talked about the benefits of cross promotion, it's been you. 
Um, <laughs> it, are, is working with Bob something that you definitely foresee in the future? I know you've worked with him on some fights within the past year, but I'm talking yeah, like yeah. high high level elite fights. Yeah, no, I mean, we, look, we talked about uh, we talked about Virgil with Crawford. We talked about uh, Ryan with uh, with uh, Theofimo. Um, there's there's many fights out there we can do. I mean, uh, Bob Arum has this kid. I believe that's a middleweight. Um, yeah, that would be great for Mugia, for instance. So we talked about different fights that we can cross promote and, and, you know, and just, just make for the fans. I mean, that's, that's what I was all about, uh, for my career, uh, my personal career. I mean, that, and that's what I'm all about, uh, as a promoter. So speaking of Bob, um, Bob is a promoter who likes to be talk very freely, right. About situations with his fighters. You yeah. said recently that someone needs to talk some sense into Ryan Garcia. What did you mean by that? No, I mean, look, what, what I mean is that, look, fighters have to let us promoters just do our job. That's basically it. You know, we know what we're doing. We, we, we've we been in this business for a very long time. And I understand the fighters get eager. They, 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 they you know, they can, they can call out a fighter and, and they can talk smack and this and that. That's fine. But just let me do my job. You know, I'll, I'll, let me take care of business and we can, we can make these fights happen. Oscar, you know, you had, you had a really successful relationship with Canelo Alvarez. He was developed into a a mega star. He's the pound for pound King right now. When you watch him now, now that he's no longer with you, do you still have a sense of pride? Oh, absolutely. I look, I mean, what we build, uh, with Canelo and, uh, where we got him to, I mean, we, we, we basically made him the big, the, 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 the richest athlete in the history of any sport you know, on paper. And he was making more money than what he's ever been making before. So uh, I was, I was very proud of that. I wish him all the best. I mean, look, when Canelo fights, everybody wins. The boxing world wins. So I, I wish him all the best. Could you have done anything differently, Oscar, to have salvaged that relationship or was it, you know, going to end that way? You know what? I mean, they look once, once the pandemic hit, I mean, it, it shook the world, obviously, literally. And, uh, you know, um, you know, it's it just made it difficult. It made it difficult. Uh, the relationship was was a little stressed by it. Um, you know, there was nothing I could do. Uh, um, you know, a lot of fighters, what they think is that the grass is greener on the other side. Well, let me tell you one thing: it's not. You've got another uh, significant Mexican fighter that you just signed, Gilberto Z- Zerto Ramirez. Talk yeah. talk about your plans for him, uh, and how talented do you see him as being? I, I can see him obviously becoming a world champion once again. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, to be the first uh, Mexican world champion at 168 is, means a great deal. He's still undefeated. He's only 20, what, 26 or 28 around there. Still young. He's on, in his peak. Um, I have big plans for him. I want to take him to, to, to 50 and 0. I want to take him to 51 and 0, 52 and 0. Um, but in stiff competition, there's a lot of fights out there for him that are, that are great, you know? So, uh, we, we strongly feel that in the future, a clash with Canelo and Sudo Ramirez can be one of the biggest all Mexican clashes in, in the history of the sport. Oscar, obviously you're an ambassador for boxing. You're one of the most recognizable fighters on the planet. And we still have so many issues facing the sport, too many titles, PEDs, the best not fighting the best. What's the number one issue you think that you can personally help fix? I think, I think it's the world titles. Um, Look, I've been, I've always been a huge advocate of, uh, of, of one world title in in, in every weight class. And uh, look, I have to say, and, and I do have, you know, uh, part to, to do with this title, but the, the ring belt is, the ring belt is recognized all over the world and it's, 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 it's a world title that is not, uh, it doesn't charge you any sanction fees. There's no politics whatsoever. It's the best fighting the best. There's a panel of, 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 of great writers who, uh, who decide who the champion is and, and, and there's, there's nothing to it. It's, it's, you're either number one or number two and either you lose it in the ring or you don't. That's the bottom line. So I think this world title issue is 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 a uh, is is a is a confusing one for the for the fight fan. I think it's uh, it's it's not a it, it's 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 not good, obviously, for the sport. But if somehow we can keep 
um, um, developing you know, uh, uh, these champions, um, and, 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 and recognizing the top guys, uh, as the ring champions, uh, you know, and these fighters advocating that world title, I think eventually there might be a change, but it's not going to be easy. I think they do do that as, as we see, I mean, we see a lot of fighters. I mean, I know Tia Fimo, um, right. you know, hold up that ring belt and it's with great pride. I think out of all the belts, even though it's not an official official, you know, right. the ring bell is the one that does matter to these guys. So you're, what else can you do to sort of pump that up and to, you know, make the ring t- uh, belt work well, so, look, so much worth what that? Worth yeah, worth. Lance, I've, I've, look, I've been, I've been, look, I don't think there's any secret that I own the, yeah. the, the ring magazine. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I obviously have it, I have it separate from, from, from Golden Boy. It's, it's a whole different entity and uh separate from its you know from from golden boy um somebody else runs it for me uh you know because i don't want people talking bad about me and talking bad about golden boy and all they they you know the politics of this and that maybe it's time maybe it's time for me to be that voice and and be the advocate for the 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 ring championship belt and nothing will change the only thing will change is that i'm gonna have that voice uh, uh, and, and it's going to be heard across the globe that the ring belt is, is the championship belt. So maybe it's time. Who knows? Well, I'll have to think about it carefully, but um, I think maybe it's time because, look, we don't charge sanctioning fees. There's no politics whatsoever. You're the best or you're not. One or two fights uh, uh, for the belt. Uh, the only way you can lose it is by losing it in the ring. That's it. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no uh, uh, champion emeritus. There's no champion this and that. You know, there's just one champion. That's it. So I think maybe it's time for me to, uh, uh, you know, let my 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 voice be heard. Oscar, last question for me before we let you go. I know you're a busy guy. What do you think is the big big statement Virgil Ortiz can make Saturday? Do you want to see him outbox him? Do you want to see an early knockout? I, I would love to see a, a late knockout. I would love to see Virgil in some type of adversity. Um, I would love to see him uh, have to maybe change up his game plan. I would love to see him kind of, you know, figure out uh, uh, Maurice Hooker. Uh, it's, look, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a very calculated, difficult fight for him. Uh, and for both guys, I think Virgil has his hands full. I think, I think even, even Maurice has his hands full, obviously, but I would love to see this fight and uh, in the later rounds. You're going to have uh, Terrence Crawford in the building, Oscar. Um, is it something to where you can broach that subject that quickly and try to get make that fight next for Virgil Ortiz, or is that a, probably something that's going to be later on down the road? Yeah, no, it, it, it all depends on how he looks. It all depends on how he looks. I mean, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure Maurice Hooker has gotten some uh, great advice from uh, Terrence Crawford. Um, you know, uh, they have... Almost not quite, but similar styles. They're very elusive. They're slick. Um, you know, they have speed. They can think. Uh, he has the experience, Maurice. So, um, look, if Virgil beats him uh, with no, uh, with ease, with no problem, then uh, it's it's something that I have to consider uh, uh, for for uh, for Virgil as you know as his next fight uh, with Crawford. Great, Oscar. Thank you so much for the time. The legend himself, the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. All right. Watch Maurice Hooker versus Virgil Ortiz Saturday on the zone. What's the jab? Oh, it's still there. <laughs> still rapid. <laughs> Love it.